Hey again everyone, I'm Steve. Welcome back to Retro Tech. So this is the Sony PVM1350 and it sold yesterday on a auction on eBay. And today I'm going to go through in detail on how to pack it up. So hopefully after you watch this video, you'll have a clear understanding of how to properly pack this and also how to not spend too much money on packing materials because you can easily spend a whole lot more than you expect to. So first off, let's go ahead now and we're going to take a look at everything I bought today to pack up this 14 inch Sony PVM. So here we are looking at the first items and the first thing I've got down here is just some easy start tape. This is heavy duty, particular brand is Duck that I bought. This package of four will cost $10 at Walmart pretty much, about that price. You may be able to find it a little cheaper if you order it online. This job is going to take about two rolls, so you're looking at half the cost of that for tape. That is a good $5 in tape. I recommend that you get some kind of roller uh, to put on the tape. It just makes the job a little bit easier. The next item I've got is over here to the right. That's these pool noodles. And I actually ordered this pack of pool noodles from eBay. It's a five-pack and it was just over $10 for the five pack. So these noodles are $2 a piece. And I'm thinking it's gonna take maybe uh, two to three noodles at least. So we're looking at about $6 in noodles at, at least on this job. We might end up having to use more, but we'll see, we'll keep a good tally. And then the next things I'm gonna be using are actually some recycled items I have from past shipping things. So first you'll see this padding foam, and this is just gonna be smushed together as much as possible and wedged in between the packed PVM monitor and the box, basically. So you'll see that as we pack it. How I use this is just filler mostly and extra cushion inside the box. And then something else I'll be using for cushion is packing peanuts and again this is just to fill in the voids in everything once we have it packed up we're just going to have a nice cushioned pressure around the tube and the monitor and that can be done by using that so i i recommend that you use any kind of reusable styrofoam you may have from other packaging you can break that up and use it for this portion because again, I have no cost in this. This is from past shipping jobs. The packing peanuts, you're looking at maybe three to five dollars for that kind of a bag of packing peanuts. The last item we're looking at is our box for today's shipping. Now this is, again, straight from Walmart. It's a 22 by 18 by 18 large sized box. And it's a pretty decent box. The good thing is, is we're gonna use two of them. So you would never want to use just one of these boxes. You want to use two of them. And again, these boxes are not expensive. Thankfully, these are under $2 a piece. So again, less than $4 for both boxes. But we'll double box this up. I'll show you how to tape it up properly. Double box it so they don't have the most protection possible. And then it fits a monitor that's 14 inches. fits really well inside this box. So now let's go ahead. We're going to go back to the monitor and just start packing it up. All right, so the next part of this job is gonna be real simple. We're gonna start cutting up our pool noodles and just beginning with our screen, cover it up and protect it nicely, especially around the edges and all the little buttons. So we're just gonna start with one pool noodle and you might wanna get yourself a nice set of scissors that are sharp and will work. I'm just gonna go here and measure this against the monitor and then I'll just cut it, make a little cut. You don't have to worry about cutting it right away. But that way I know how long I need to make this. And then I can just split that off and then cut it again down here. And that'll equal about to three equal pieces that I can use to cover the front of this monitor. So I've got the pool noodles cut into equal thirds. And the last thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut them this way and equally on the other side. And we're going to get them in half. And we're going to look to half every single one of these. This was just a leftover, so it'll be used as a leftover section to fill in a spot that we need. Now you don't really want to get a lot of tape residue around this clean monitor. And the way I like to start building the outside is to take these halves. So we're taking one half here, and then we'll just build this around the, the outside of the monitor to start with. 
and tape those together with just a couple of small pieces of pre-cut tape and then build a frame around the PVM like that and you may need to come over here and trim off some of these corner pieces to make them all fit up correctly but we'll go ahead now and tape that up so we're not getting any tape on the actual monitor our top ring has been completely built and again I'm not taping anything I'm trying to get a little pressure on it not too much now I'm going to cut an additional four pieces like that to put around the bottom portion and then we'll start filling in the screen area with more cushion pieces that are cut into halves. The bottom ring has now been built with this yellow pool noodle. And I did add a couple extra pieces here in this corner and I'm going to add additional padding in here that I have just those little pieces that I've been collecting. I'm going to jam them in here and fill this area up and make sure I get a nice protection on these buttons. I will recommend that when you ship these you push the power button in that way uh, it's not going to hurt it to leave it like that but you can just push it in that way nothing will hit it hopefully and cause it to become damaged that's one of the first things that does get damaged in shipping well the bottom has been completed I'm just going to show you what I've done so you can get an idea I've cut up these smaller leftover wedges pushed them in behind here to tighten everything up especially in like these corners see how there's some you'll end up with a couple of spots just wedge those extra pieces up in there tightly so you can protect your power button and all the other buttons up in front here and these corner buttons and then if we swing around to the back i've done the same thing back there with extra pieces and i've gone over it with some tape and it's pretty tight like that's what you want more just not as much, so much give it doesn't have to be completely tight but it also loops around under the PVM frame. So that's a good thing about those circular pattern is it's easy to get under there and actually have it uh, protecting the bottom. Uh, just more packing. That's two noodles right there. So we're up to two noodles already. It'll take at least two more. It might take the whole bunch to properly do this. Now here is the wrapped up monitor. And it's good, nice and tight all the way around the sides up to the top and that was one more noodle that it took so total we've got three full noodles already in this now the bottom it uh, does come out a little bit more because it's got more padding down here extra pieces plus the buttons are protected so in order to get some more padding up here I'm going to add a piece of padding that I have Right here, it's just some kind of thermal inner liner thing pad that's real thin, that's extra. So I'm going to triple it up like this, and then I'm going to tape it up and slap it right there on the front here. And then um, we'll get that wrapped up. So that's just some extra cushioning, and we'll start working on filling in the top. And we'll flip the whole thing over and fill in the bottom with padding and get it ready to box. Here we have added that thermal liner cushion that was just some extra stuff I had around the house that I recycled for this job but it gave it some extra cushion it's tightly wrapped around on all sides just to give it a little bit more protection so now we got a couple inches of protection on all of this and it's really nice because now it's flush and it'll fit in there evenly in the box and be nice and tight so now I just need to build up the top here which will be more of this foam and I might even use some more of this wrap on top of it and tape it over and then we'll go from there but I've got my top done and my sides and bottom done it's nice and tight I did add the layer of blue which is a noodle and then use some more of that thermal wrap to just you know give it a little bit more cushion and now I'm going to lean it on its face roll it around and we're going to tidy up the bottom of the monitor now similar to what we did with the top we'll give it a little push Keep some of that stuff down there that way just put some padding in here and it'll be ready to go and now the only thing left to do is flip this back onto its bottom here <laughs> tape up this flap here on front and we'll be ready to be done with the packaging. The monitor is now completely wrapped 
and I'm going to be moving it over here into the box. Now the inner box, I flipped it upside down and I went ahead and taped up about three slices of tape up here, one on each side, and then I went around it after that, long or this way, went around it this way. So it's taped in there nicely and that's just going to give a little bit of protection to this corner and I tried to squeeze it a little bit together because what I'm going to do next is slip the second box which is just open not taped at all I'm going to slip the second box over top of this box just slip this over top see what I mean how it will slide down here and then make a two layer box so now I'm going to continue to push this box down where it's even just about with that and we'll repack it up. We'll put some tape on the bottom here. Get this nice and taped up. And one last tip here. When I tape up the bottom of this box, I always tape an entire layer of tape on the entire bottom side of the box. And then I go around the box again. And the reason I do that is to protect the bottom one inch section of the box from moisture penetrating into it and destroying the box as it's being shipped just in case there's a lot of humidity or moisture along the way when I'm shipping it. But other than that, it's time to simply turn it over and get the packed monitor now inside this box. Now I've put down a thin layer of peanuts and this is again just to fill in the voids when I put the monitor wrapped up inside here. I try to peek it up a little bit in the corners at the bottom and then flatten it out on the bottom so you can have some peaks in the corner. That way when you set it in you'll have a little extra cushioning on the corners. But it's ready now to put our monitor in. Now it's time to put the monitor in the box. So just do that. It fits in there very nicely. And take a look. See how it's even in there, and those peaks help give you a little extra protection in those corners. But the next thing to do is to stabilize this inside this box here, and that's where I can add my old pieces of foam that I showed you at the beginning of the video, scrunched up in these corners, as well as I'll probably put a layer along each side of the box to give it an extra layer of cushioning. Now the sides are complete. Very dense this stuff is. I've just wedged it down in there as far as possible along the edges and the sides, scrunched it up, made it nice and dense. And there's no way that's shifting in the box and it's got inches upon inches of solid protection. And the last thing I'll do is put a layer of peanuts right on the top of it. Spread those peanuts out, make sure they get into those voids for you, and then pretty much finished professionally packing your pro video monitor. Now I've finished the box, let's look at the final touches here. So this is the side that the screen's on, right here. Now I've not marked that in any way, I just know it. But as long as it stays this side up, it should be fine. So that's the natural shape of this box. It's also got some handles built into it, which is really nice. Just push those in, and now you've got a nice way on each side to hold this box. But I've added up arrows with a big Sharpie, a fragile sticker. Now you don't have to do this. You could write fragile and save some money. And then I put a layer of tape here, and then the middle, and then at the bottom. And then up top, I taped it all up top, added a fragile sticker on top. This side up, something that I just drew on and made this side up. I did have to add a single piece of cardboard that I cut out of another box to have that completely sealed in there. So it doesn't look like it's got a gap or anything because it's expanded out a little bit on the top. But that's pretty much it. Now we'll take it up to FedEx and we'll see what they say about how much it's going to cost to ship it. I just got back from FedEx and now I've got the details here on how much it costs to ship as well as the total packing cost. So let's start with the packing. 
Ultimately, it cost me about $20 total to pack this item. So that's about $10 in pool noodles, about $5 in tape, $4 in boxes, and then maybe a dollar's worth of packing peanuts. And all the extra stuff that I used in there would have been left over or recycled from other packaging that I had received. So that didn't have any real cost to it. Now for the shipping costs, this one was going from Tennessee to Minnesota and for FedEx ground shipment, it cost $58 to ship it, insure it, and everything. Now I'll give you some final tips here. If you do ever have to ship a PVM, please be in contact with the person who's receiving it because there are guidelines for these uh, coverages when it comes to shipping something this valuable and this fragile. So you need to make sure that you contact your receiver and that they know to keep all the packaging in case anything happens to the uh, high item, high value item in transit. They must keep the packaging because then they can show that to FedEx or whatever the carrier is. They're the ones that if they're going to assume responsibility, you have to prove to them that you did what you were supposed to in the packing. Well, that's pretty much going to do it for today's video. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you next time with some more retro content.